Hello, today's guest. I met him when uh, I tried to play basketball. Tried, uh, keyword tried. Then I stopped from embarrassing myself because I suck. Ah, who do we have on the show? We find out in just a bit. Lah, huh? Okay. Hello, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. So is it weird if people were to say that you were an ex-politician? Uh, not really. I get a lot of that. Uh, I would call myself still a politician. Ah. Uh, just that I'm not no longer a frontline politician. Uh. So you're now the sideline or backline? <laughs> uh, I think I'm like uh, the reserve of the reserve. Ah, uh, when, like the reserve when the reserve bench is depleted, then maybe I get called <laughs> up to the reserve bench. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we have with the show, Mr. Ong Kiam Ming. Yeah. <laughs> Can call me Ken Ming. Can call me Ken Ming. Yeah. I like I like his uh, I like his Instagram and Twitter handle. It's called I'm Okay Man. Some people have called it I Mock Man, but I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm right not gonna now. lie. The first time I saw, I'm like, what's Ock Man? <laughs> out there, up there, I'm like, oh, okay, not nice play of words. Yes, yeah. Yes, so yes. you know, OKM his initials. We got Shu Fei in the show too as well. Sup? Yeah, I like how you remembered me. <laughs> Sorry lah, you know important guest here. You <laughs> can lah, we get there. <laughs> no, I actually, you know, I requested for Shufi to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I feel so flattered. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I wanted to talk to you guys about like content creation and gaming. Because uh, I like gaming, and then uh, I'm a bit into content creation now with my own podcast. Are oh yes. Okay with yeah. The uh, money. Yeah. Hey, that 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 is doing so well, man. And everyone's just like, whoa, so many heated topics you guys discuss about, mm. huh? Yeah, yeah. We 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 actually don't keep everything uh, we don't reveal everything behind the curtain but enough to whet people's appetite wow. <laughs> wait I'm sorry but I've, I haven't heard your podcast though but it's what okay, do you guys okay. talk about uh, we talk about uh, public policies in ways that are relevant to to the, the man on the street or in oh, the shopping mall I yeah. see okay okay yeah lah I think whatever questions the normal people will ask each other now you have the person here you can ask hey, so uh, uh, straight off the bat I had to do this uh, so are we really okay or not <laughs> uh, we're we are okay we're not too bad uh, we could be better but we're not too bad I uh last time I had Tony uh, Tony Pua yes, on the show yes. right uh yeah but the show's okay you know really get into trouble uh, <laughs> but but uh he did mention uh, at one point of time that hey, in order for uh politics to stabilize you kind of need to kind of go down to the really ground on the floor and then be unstable a bit then it will go back up again in stability do you think that uh, concept is correct or what? Yeah, Are we, we going yeah. through that now? Yeah, we we went through that in uh, 2020. You know when we had a few changes in prime ministers. Uh, and then now I think the situation is stabilized. This government will remain stable for the next uh, three years. Mm. Uh, so I think that gives certainty to business, gives certainty to people to go out and try to uh, address normal problems instead of uh, funny problems like COVID and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Then, hey, but okay, so I always ask this question because like, from a very uh, like from the spectator side uh, of the layman the, side, the, like. the layman side, right? We look at politicians and we always wonder, why do you want to be a politician? Because it's why do you want to become a politician? Because it seems like a lot of stress. Ah, uh, okay. But before I answer that question, I'd like to get Shufi in the conversation because you have interviewed a few politicians before. Mm. I think my sense is that Shufi probably more representative of the younger crowd. Yes. Uh, okay. Basically, you avoid politicians and politics like the plague, lah. Right now. Something uh, like that. Yeah. I they're mean, not. They're not very in tune. Mm. Yeah, mm. but that's a very common thing though, because when I was shoe face age, alamak, <laughs> yeah. we were not very in tune. Uh, because yet. I haven't started paying taxes yet. <laughs> ah, yes, <laughs> true, true, true. Yes, yes I mean uh, we actually the taxes thing because if you work for a company, the company automatically deduct ma. But yeah. you still have to file your own taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until they come file your own taxes. Oh, why mm. you deduct my money? Who who does this go? To? Oh, tax. Mm. I see. And then um. Actually no lo. Actually, actually right. If you ask me right, I was very kind of like aware about politics when I was maybe 33, 34 years old ish. Mm, yeah, because mm. right now, if let's say you guys are content providers, right? Yeah. Uh, you know the service tax has gone up from six percent to eight <sighs> percent. Right. Yeah. So you have to charge more to your clients. Then the clients will say, hey, you know, hey, if you charge more eight percent, maybe you reduce the top line, whatever. You know, got a bit of like that, right? Yeah. yeah so that that affects you know. Everyone, you know, uh, people in in you know, the service industry. Yeah, it does. Uh, but I don't. Does it? I don't think SST uh, is applied to content creators or the small medium enterprises. It's more of the bigger businesses, right? No, but if you are a service provider, you 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 will have to to pay that. Yeah. You will have to get your clients to pay pay You know your you know you do your content creation, yeah. you charge advertising and all that. You know, so yeah. Yeah. Affected. Yeah. So to answer the question, yeah, 
she's quite uh, disconnected lah in regards. <laughs> but you know, the only time she's very connected is probably I think the the only time that you're probably connected or really invested into it is during election period. Yeah, la. correct, correct, correct. And I feel like nowadays there's a lot of information circulating online because last time like you guys are only like depend on newspaper and stuff like that, right? But <laughs> now, like, social media is, like, booming with this kind of information. So I, like how, I like how she's pointing to me you guys refer yeah. to newspaper. Mm. <laughs> Correct, what? Old school, old school, old school. <laughs> old school. <laughs> now, hey, everyone look at TikTok. Okay, this is the news already. Yeah. 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 I don't care about the others already. Hey, yeah. but that's a little bit dangerous, don't you think? Uh, I mean, okay, there's both a blessing and also a curse when it comes to social media. That's what I think because, like, for for someone who was working in traditional media, so I used to work for radio, lah. If yeah. people don't know, so um, long time ago, yeah, long time ago, galaxy, far, far away. <laughs> and traditional media is literally your source of uh, a source of income, pula, source of information that is legit. Ah, source of truth, so to speak. Source of <laughs> truth. Your news portals, your radio news, top of the hour news. You know, uh, your Awani, your whatever, your news, your RTM Astro, news, Astro, yeah. everything. So everything that comes there is legit. Is is uh, verified, right? That's why you like to think, lah. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the thing. It's, it's and then after that, because of social media, anybody can become a broadcaster. Mm. Anybody right. can become uh, a conveyor of. Gossip or news, mm. and you know there are a lot of these social media platforms, right? That started off as gossip platforms, like example, your, any example? like say ah, okay. World of Buzz. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. uh, they started off as uh, very like reporting, very uh, trying to viral stuff, lah. Yeah, viral stuff. But yeah. now they like even reporting news and all that. You know, like politics, uh, things that happen. And why I say it's both a blessing and a curse is number one, you get the news. Beforehand, mm. but just like what happened recently, the Taiwan earthquake, mm. and then you go on Twitter and you be like, "Oh my god, you want to find out what's happening?" And all mm. of a sudden, you see like four buildings collapsing, mm. and then one fellow says, "Oh my god, this is happening in Taiwan right now," mm. and Do then you only know whether it's real or not. Yeah, and only to find out half an hour, and then after that, you be like, "Oh my god!" And then you forward it to your friends and everything, mm. only to find out half an hour later, there was actually a video in China of them demolishing the unfinished ah okay okay, uh, okay. buildings. So that's yeah. why it's like you know, what's your take on that? Uh, I think it's always good to check and double check. Uh, if let's say you see something that's being viral, check on the actual uh, news. You know uh, whether it's uh, you know local news or verified news from that particular country, or if it's international news, go to your normal New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Financial Times. There's so many good portals out there that you can uh, you know get access to either for free or for 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 uh, for a fee, and you you can just verify it. You know you should be able to do it in relatively short period of time, but it it requires a more active effort uh, for you to actually know what are the genuine sources. La. Yeah, but That's more true. of the older crowd usually don't do. Actually, to be honest, no, like everyone does not do that. No, uh, yeah. okay, I'll give an example. Maybe something that, uh, you know, uh, Shufei and, and uh, her friends can relate to, right? <laughs> Let's say there's, there's some sort of uh, uh, news about uh, the latest uh, GTA game, Grand Theft mm-hmm. Auto, or when it's going to be released, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of buzz out there. I'm sure that there are certain gaming websites that are the go-to in terms of verified news. Correct? More, more genuine, more, uh, well, uh, you know, authorized. Maybe you go to the PlayStation website, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm. But for me, right, usually I just Google. Then I see, like, you know how they compile all the, like, news, like, portals together. Yep. And then I'll see whether, like, the, you know, the websites are all writing the same thing. Ah, That's see? how I verify. So there are ways to verify. Yeah. yeah. yeah you just need to know. But it took want. her a while to get there, though. She needed to understand, uh, you know, the gaming landscape or that game in particular. No, but the initial response is, I'm going to, like, ask my friends straight away. Or I'll just forward that thing straight away without verifying first. Because yeah. it's, like, your initial response is, like, oh, my God. It's, it's coming okay, out. It's you okay. just send. Yeah, you just send to your friend. And then your friend, maybe, probably, I assume, is a friend that you trust. And... Somebody that you think would know, you know, how to verify this kind of information. Yeah, correct? yeah, yeah. yeah? So later yeah. on, yeah. yeah. So only later on when we verify lah. But the initial response is just to share. Yeah. So going back yeah. to the issue of, uh, you know, um, whether it's a, a curse or a blessing, you know, I, I think it is what it is. Uh, you know, people in the news cycle in politics, we have to respond to those kinds of uh, situations. And then maybe going back to the question of, why is it that people want to be in politics, right? I I can't speak for others, but for me. You know, I had this uh, weird notion of actually wanting to help people. Okay. <laughs> and I managed to help some people along the way when I was in politics for, for nine or ten years. But now, uh, when I've sort of like uh, taken a seat back, a uh, back seat to the back seat, like, you know, mm-hmm. reserve of the reserve, 
uh, I find that there are a lot more interesting things uh, that I can do and still be able to help people. Yeah. And one of the things I actually do want to do uh, with uh, Mr. Money on my podcast, on our podcast, is to relate to younger people and try to make understand where they are coming from, uh, and also to make you know politics or policies uh, relevant to them. Mm. Right. So I, I think that's one of the ongoing challenges that uh, the politicians uh, or people like me in the sort of like podcast universe face. Uh. Yeah. I, I think uh, young people don't realize that politics or policies, sorry, I won't say politics, yeah, but policies. Yes. I don't think they realize how how they can contribute to bettering a policy for their country and how a policy can help them until they are kind of like working and trying sure. to survive on their own. Because I think in Asian culture, you always depend on your parents until a certain age, then suddenly it's most of the time when after you get married, then mm. you come move out of the household in your own and then you start kind of budgeting your finances and then you realize, uh, ah, ah, yes. Actually, that's, that's very true. Yeah. Yeah, because only recently, okay, la, I wouldn't say recent, recent, but maybe like these past few years, like, okay, for example, la, I take like insurance, for example. Mm. Last time, right, they tell me, buy, buy, buy this. I'm like, oh, I don't understand anything. Then yeah. now when I go back and read the policy, I'm like, oh, mm. so this is what I'm buying. Yeah, you can only withdraw it and this certain age, this is the yeah, money yeah, that goes yeah. inside that maybe uh, after a while can help you generate enough uh, interest and income so that after 15 years, you don't have to pay into it anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. these kind of things. Like when it comes to financial stuff, right? Like if you ask me a few years back, right, I have no idea what I'm doing. And then now when you tell me the same thing, I'm like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Like, okay. Yeah, like put in FD, like, you know, got this return, blah, blah, blah. Last time I just like, oh, okay, understand. Mm. But then it, I guess it didn't really like matter as much back then. Yeah, because you're rich kid, ma. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not because of rich. No, I'm it's kidding, like, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, it's like you don't have the urgency to understand it. Until like when you reach a certain age and then you realize like, oh, this is important. And then it clicks in your brain. And so, so that's an important point because, you know, young people are not interested in politics. Maybe it's not necessarily a bad thing because yep. things are not so bad that they have to actually worry about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe only when you see people going down to the streets and, you know, Bursay mm. or whatnot, and then there's huge currency crisis, like what happened in the 98 uh, currency crisis when suddenly people couldn't afford to go overseas to study, yeah. at least for, for, for that, that category of people. Then, you know, then young people will start worrying, you know. Yeah. That's true. Mm. The, the 98 crisis caused a lot of people studying overseas. All of a sudden, I like, just stop. I don't care where, which Sam or how smart you are, mm. as long as you could not afford the lifestyle that you are literally taking the next flight back home. It's, it's really sad la, at, the, at the point in time. No, and, and now kids also face that problem. You know, if let's say parents can't afford because, uh, you know, the ringgit is now, you know, almost, you know, 4.8, 4.8. Mm. 7 to, to 1 US dollar it, it may affect some kids who want mm -hmm. to go overseas but what was your, what's your take on that because um, alright uh, in our, my conversation with some people uh, oh no 1 USD is uh, hitting 4.8 4. whatever almost hitting 5 it's bad for us and some of my friends who are in the finance industry are saying like no you, you actually compared to other countries Malaysia is actually in a pretty favourable condition as compared to like say another country like Japan they are doing worse off than <coughs> us so we've only appreciated this year against two currencies. One is the Japanese yen, the other one is the renminbi. Mm -hmm. uh, all the other currencies, uh, rupiah, US dollar, sing up, sing dollar, all all the major currencies we've actually depreciated against them. But mm -hmm. the the good good news is that the economy is still growing. Uh, FDI is still coming in. Uh, so you know, uh, people still are not in a situation where they are scared of losing their jobs. COVID is mm. behind them. You know, travel has come back. So. Things are, you know, like I said, we are doing okay, but can be better, but can also be worse. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to draw this conversation back to gaming and, and this content thing. Uh, because I want to show, perhaps from my you know, experience as an older gentleman, uh, <laughs> older person, uh, how my own sort of like gaming experience has changed and how I see things differently from a policy and economic perspective, right? Okay. So uh, I started playing games when I was young, younger. Uh, playing Civilization. Mm. Sif? Uh, no. No? No? Probably oh, wait, not, right? you're so, uh, someone younger than me knows that. Okay, yeah, Genie knows <laughs> it. Is it where, where you, okay, is this where you have to go online and type in www.something and then play online? No, type? no, 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 no. We, we download and then. There's one on game last time called what? Utopia. Is it Utopia? Oh, that one way back. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Civilization. No, I have so, not played Civilization. Is it? It's until six now. So it's a sort of like a, you know, a strategy game where you have to go and uh, conquer yep. nations oh. and, uh, you know, uh, do trade and, 
grow your religion and trade routes and stuff like that. But you know, we I used to lock myself up in a room for six hours to just to play. Is that the game that uh, requires you to build cities? Ah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you have to build farms, and then you have to build the refinery, mm. and then you have to build the il- the power. Yeah, whatever. it's like Sim City. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. Something like that, lah. Yeah. Ah, okay, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, but. So from that starting point, right, you're just interested in the game itself. You know, right. just like when you play first person shooter, you know, when I started it was things like Wolfenstein, Doom, you know, now it's obviously different. Uh, you know, your your Fortnite and whatnot. So at the time you're just interested in playing the game, kill people, shoot people. But then later on, as I grew older, then people started talking about what? Physics engine. Right? When you talk about physics engine, you're talking about oh, when you shoot uh, what is the how 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 uh, is there some sort of feedback that you can feel? Uh, how does the bullet uh, go with d- different environments? Yeah, if oh the okay. air is thicker, then the bullet is slower. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those kind of physics. That stuff. was with Counter Strike, lah. I feel. Yeah, Counter Strike has later on. Yeah, because then then it becomes uh, then you look into the economics of it because the people who developed the physics engine, you can actually use it from one game to another. Mm-hmm. That becomes the underlying sort of like uh, you know uh, ecosystem that you 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 live and and build the world in. And then after that, you add in bells and whistles, the storyline and stuff like that to make the game more interesting. And then il- along the way also, you know, I uh, started playing games like uh, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, this oh, one. Yeah, I, I like, I like that, that game, yeah. yeah. And then for, for those games, what is the interesting point is storyline. Mm. Yeah. Right, the storyline, you know, uh, 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 what, what is the, the Japanese creator's name? Uh, uh, Hideo Okijima? Uh, Hideo Kojima, yes. Uh, Kojima, yeah. yeah. So his storylines were fantastic. Right, and then you look at all the cut, uh, the 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 the, scre- the cut screens and all that, you know, and then you start to develop an interest in storytelling, mm. Mm. right? And then later on, you can see how uh, actually gaming uh, becomes a whole industry in itself, right? Yeah. A game, you know, when you release a game on on PC and then later on uh, on uh, PS consoles. or on consoles, right? You're talking about games that can reap in hundreds of uh, millions. millions of uh, dollars. Billions. Billions. Yes. And, and they cost a lot to develop, mm-hmm. right? Uh, for GTA. Do you all play GTA? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Last time GTA was the kind of like ev- the, the game that everybody goes uh, to school and talk about. Yeah. And the, the, the voice acting, they are voiced by Hollywood stars, you know, Ray Liotta and all that. You know, this GTA 3. La, you know, yeah. That's how far uh, back. You know, then suddenly you take an interest from an entertain- entertainment standpoint already, right? Yeah. So, you know, as you grow older, you sort of like appreciate the larger ecosystem that these games uh, are developed in. And then now, you know, I know you're you're a Dota player. You do Twitch. Then that that suddenly becomes another ecosystem whereby you're not just playing a game, but you also can gain income. You can have followers. You can have good interactions with people. So I think this is what uh, you know um, about. This is what I think it really is really important to be able to know these kinds of, of things to connect with the younger generation and then maybe. Uh, understand the larger ecosystem so you know how different uh, people fit into the larger economy. Ah. Mm. Something like that. Yeah. Wow, that's so, that's so deep. That's such a, that's such a deep path <laughs> into gaming. No, but it's fun. It's fun. You know, it's fun to What, what games do you play now? Uh, okay, so <coughs> I'm very, very tempted to play, uh, to buy a PS5 Okay. Uh, to play Baldur's Gate. Oh, okay, okay. So, good reviews. Good reviews lah. Uh. I bought a PS5 to play Astro Bot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I play Astro Bot. I heard Spider Man quite oh, good. Oh, Spider Man's good. Yes. Yeah, Spider Man is good. Spider Man is definitely I got good. It though. Uh, I'm still, well, I haven't had time to play it, but I'm still uh, doing the the more recent. Is it Craig Morales? The Morales one? Now, is, uh, now the game that's trending is No Dragon's Dogma. Uh, that one, that, that one's trending that. now. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, actually, right, I found it a lot more fun to play games when I was in my 20s because the games that came out, right, no brainer one. I, I'm not sure if you've gone this far back, but I think during the play, I'm not sure whether it was the PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2. But I had this game that I loved so much. It was actually Jackie Chan. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, it's okay. like literally you go and you complete his stunts. But he was this really ugly looking block fella <laughs> that just jumps up and down. And after that, ooh, comes boss. And then he starts fighting, fighting, fighting. And then after that, obviously, uh, technology wasn't as great back then. Mm-hmm. Once you hit the last hit and then the boss dies, then it would just cut scene and you, show, you, you see very nice computer animation graphics finishing the thing. Now that I come back to the ugly blocking, you know, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. So that was what I used to enjoy. Uh, Crash Bandicoot was what I used to enjoy. Oh yeah, that, that game's fun. And, 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 and because of that, I like games like uh, Crash Bandicoot so uh, you like more mob- chill, casual games, lah. Yeah, and the compared ones that to triple A games. There's one time where 
PlayStation was so popular because of one game called Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still was, popular now. It is still popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you're like, okay, 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 I still want to play it because everyone was talking about it. I, oh, I found it so boring. Okay, Final <laughs> Fantasy, I think. <laughs> That's th- an unpopular th- opinion. Yeah. Too tiring. My, yeah. my fingers cannot move fast enough. <laughs> I was like, playing, oh, oh, this. Okay, okay, then. So, so my admission, uh, I started re- uh, getting into the PS games because I didn't own a console before this, mostly PC games before that. I, I bought a PS4 the day before lockdown, the first MCO. Oh. Mm. Right, so that was my perfect excuse to go and play. Uh, and I w- the, the game that I really got hooked on to is um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Wow. Ah, okay, okay. Fantastic storyline, easy. The controls are quite easy, intuitive. You don't have to shoot people with guns. You're like, looking at you know, different sort of like a more, uh, you, know, um, you know, basic weapons, you know, bow and arrow of different sorts, you know, spear and things like that. Uh, and then they have a version now on PS5 that is uh, VR. Mm. Yeah, so I'm still thinking of whether to get it or not. Yeah. Mm. I'll buy, just buy, buy. Just have, buy. We, have you played Uncharted? No, nope, no. Nope. Oh, you haven't? I, okay, I loved Uncharted. Uh, I played it, and uh, what caught me by surprise was there was one scene where that fella spoke Malay. Ah. And I'm like, oh! <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh! But back then, there was no such thing as people playing games and streaming themselves on YouTube. Uh. So, but you know, they will screenshot that particular thing and then they'll go onto blogs and say, oh my God, you know, they, they said something in, Malay, in Bahasa yes. Malaysia. Then I thought Indonesia came in and said, Itu Bahasa Indonesia. Bahasa and Indonesia. there was this fight going on and then saying, like, <laughs> and then, you know, no, oh, it's Bahasa Indonesia. The, the setting of where he was, you know, is actually in Indonesia. And then I'm like, oh, no, la, there's no such thing. La. The, <laughs> game, the game is a game. But I mean, you should try and chart it. I really liked it. Uh, so, so let me ask you guys, la, you know, for games, right? Uh, how do you because you know all of us have limited time how do you go about choosing the kind of games uh, that you want to play is it like you go to to, to uh, you know websites to get and check the reviews and then later on you go to YouTube to get and do some uh, uh, you know see some gameplays to see what the action is like you know what, what, what I always rely on IGN and ah, okay. it has to be yes. a 4 and a uh, okay, la, okay, la, 4 is too much la, okay? it has to at least be a 3.5 and above before I decide to actually go and purchase the game mm. or mm. Da- um, for now now these days it's download the game la. Sure. it's like if people are going to give it a rating of 1 and no matter how much I like that, okay, I, I give you an example. Like, uh, if I like, I like to play basketball. And but if that particular game they rate it a two, I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna buy lah. I don't want to waste uh, money. NBA you know? 2K, but that one NBA 2K should be decent. Yeah, it's right? okay. Uh, NBA 2K is decent, uh, but uh, I bought it. But I have no time because you know there's two kids at home lah. So uh, 2K uh, versus two kids, two kids wins. Uh, two kids <laughs> wins. Yes. <laughs> then Shufi, how? For me, uh, usually I watch people streams lor. Uh. Like I'll just see like you know a bit of sneak peek lah. See how they play, then whether it suits me or not. Yeah, but usually for now, nowadays, uh, like I prefer to play more platformer games eh, because like if you, you play like open world games, they will take a lot of time, mm. right? Like one once you think you can play like for like six, seven, eight hours super long, but like platformers is like level by level ma. Mm-hmm. So like more uh, self-contained line. Yeah, sense. you can more self-contained. There is a long. goal to work towards, right? Yeah, yeah, and maybe like one level takes you like probably like depends like five to like fifteen minutes at max. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you, you can actually control like how much you play la, At least. Mm, yeah. yeah. And there was the okay, when the switch came out, I bought it, and then obviously mm-hmm. the the flagship game that was being promoted with the switch is uh, Legends of Zelda, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, oh cool, oh, so I will play it lah because everyone's playing it, yes. everyone's streaming it on uh, on on the YouTube, everyone's streaming it on Twitch, Twitch yeah. and I'm like, okay, cool, this should, and, and it's like. The reason why I want to play it is because every Legends of Zelda uh, video had like millions of views, millions of views. Mm. So we know for a fact that, okay, cool. Um, you know, a lot of people tend to find this very popular. So because you know what? The numbers show, uh, right? So, so from a content creation standpoint, you're interested in that. Uh. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. This seems cool. You know, you know, everybody seems to uh, uh, verify that this is a cool game. But when I started playing, it's not a game for me, man. I was not patient enough yeah. to explore the open world. And I think like uh, some parts of the game requires you to take uh, different different uh, mixtures or potions or whatever not to recreate another potion for either yourself or your abilities mm-hmm. and agility and whatever not. Mm-hmm. And I'm too like, complicated. Yeah, I was like, this is too complicated mm-hmm. for me. You need to juggle his health. You need to juggle his skill set, mm-hmm. his agility, his what 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 not not. And then you have to buy things to upgrade. I after I tried so hard. I actually at first it was like oh cool. Then after like after a week, I was trying to force myself to finish the game. Mm. I have not finished the game until today. Uh, it's a bit like maybe what uh, like farming you, simulator kind of games. You, have you tried Elden Ring? 
Uh, I have the game. I haven't like finished it. Oh, it's damn difficult. Yeah, it's so. Di- yeah. Oh my god, there are a lot of difficult games that I cannot. I I re- okay. I think one thing about gaming, right? You have to understand what kind of gamer you are because there are certain like games that people like give good reviews, like like you say, right? But yep. it's just not for you. Yeah. Yeah. The Elden, Elden Ring, good reviews. I I can't play it. Yeah, uh-huh. it's so hard. So mm. Kiro also, I cannot play. Like I played like halfway, right? Oh my god, I keep dying, you know, like my death count is super high, like I cannot pass. And then there was this one NPC okay, I tell you where I'm stuck, okay? I'm stuck at this like particular um area, right, where there's an NPC and you have to talk to the NPC and then he'll help you like fight the boss or something one. Right? Like it was quite a while back lah. But then right, I accidentally killed the NPC, you know. Huh? And then never mind, I killed the NPC, never mind. I tried to restart, you know, when you press restart, then it will restart that that you know, that, that scene, segment, right? Uh, yeah. The NPC never came back. <laughs> uh, because you killed the fella, so you yeah, so I'm already. stuck there. You know, I'm just like, oh my god, I cannot continue this. Look game, for so cheats, yeah. la, Look for cheats, la. I'm sure you can. Look hey, I used to do that. Okay, I tell you, like when GTA came out, right? Like uh, front, front, back, back, A A B B A A B B, unlimited <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I, re- oh, okay, I'm gonna admit. Last time GTA, right? You know, people like to say, yeah, I finished the game already. I'm like, shit, I haven't finished yet. Then I'm like, <laughs> I'm just cheat code la. And then when you do that, right? It's you, you, I. The, the cheat code, it's. Unlimited money and unlimited ammo and whatever not, right? Mm. You feel invincible and you feel great because all of a sudden the game that was so hard that you could not beat that one level became so easy. So be like, ah, I like the game. But that only lasts yeah, for yeah. a after, few after hours. After a while, not, not challenging really. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, it's not challenging. Too easy anymore. already. Wait, yeah. Do you know people still play GTA now? Yeah, I it's know. It's so fun, you know. It's, they just announced the new GTA what, that's coming out next year. Mm. Was it? Yeah. yeah, yeah no, that's, that's one of the games I was referring to when you, you have to go to IGN or whatever to verify when's the release date. But, but GTA has it. already built a name for themselves. It's like, they're like a cult. They have such a huge following yeah. that, like, whatever, uh, whatever. It's like remember when they released the 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 trailer the other day? I thought it was out, you know. Bloody hell! It's a trailer to tell you that it's coming out next year. I'm yes. like, <laughs> and, and, and people are still like, yeah, I'm waiting for it and whatever not. I I I remember I used to play it on the PS3. Then the PlayStation Portable came out, mm-hmm. right? Wow, then I was like, okay, yeah. save money, save money, save money, and play on it. The graphics were, at that point of time, great, but now it's obviously not great. Mm. Not as great of, as, as the console, but I still play it, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is fun, this is fun, this is fun. Now you can play on your phone. Yeah, mm. I know. Mm. But well, now, now people play private server. You know, it's so fun. Mm. They mm. role play. Oh. So let's say, right, you go into that server, right, and then you are supposed to play the police or whatever. You cannot use your real name. They mm. actually ban you uh, if you use your real name. If you say anything like, you know, that is not within the game. So let's say you're the police, right? You have to make like a persona of the, mm, that person. Mm, you have to take that, that yeah. identity. Yeah, as long as you're in play. the game, right? You have to be that person. What, well, this is GTA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to talk like them also. I mean, you can talk in your own way, la, but oh, okay, you have to okay, play okay. that character. Right. Yeah. I know it became a huge thing where everybody went to GTA Online during the, the pandemic. Mm. Mm. It was like such a huge thing that I also tried to download and then join. And then yeah. I realized that, you know what? I'm too old for this. <laughs> 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 no, actually, one of the, one of the interesting things, uh, you know, going to a Star Wars reference, I'm not sure whether you remember when Princess Leia died. Yeah. Uh, there, was, uh, th- there was a game called the uh, Star Wars uh, Old Republic. Yes, uh, you know MM, uh, OP, uh, uh, MMORPG, you know, and they actually went to a shrine, and then people, you know, yeah, dedicated and you know, paid tribute to to Princess Leia. There. Yeah, this this was the online world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they all just went there, and it all in their decked out suits mm. and their skids. Mm. Yeah, and then like you know, making them do their NPC moves on kneeling down la, don't know what la. And I'm like, I'm like, wow. <laughs> no, so so maybe just a bit of a switch la, you know, because. In these days, Malaysia, there are a lot of divisive topics and all that. So when, you know, maybe more relevant to Shufi since she's more in the gaming world with the younger people, do you find that gaming is a good way to sort of like cross racial, cultural barriers? Because when people play games, you know, your Dotas or whatnot, you have people from all sorts of backgrounds. And oh, yeah, yeah, play. yeah, sure, sure, of course. Mm. So yeah. what, what have some of the things uh that you know have uh you experience that are a little bit more interesting from uh, this kind of uh you know cross cultural cross national kind of perspective mm, okay uh wait let me think about this because now right recently there's this uh new agent in valorant i don't know if you guys have heard of the news so basically this new agent right she's non-binary mm. yeah so basically they um 
how to say they disclose her as like you know someone who doesn't have like a gender la. Mm. Sorry, the, yeah. the character of the game. The character, okay. yeah. He, she's identified as non-binary. Okay. So there was this whole like debate la, like you know, cause some people it's very hard for you to say like they, cause you have to use the pronouns they, they right? them, yeah. Yeah, so it can it's kind of a bit confusing when you use it in game, mm-hmm. cause like let's say you say there's one person like. At this certain area, but if you use they, then people would think like, oh, oh there's few multiple. People. People. It's like yeah. it's like it's like playing Counter Strike. Yeah. They are there. Ah, uh, they are there. Oh. Who? Who? Oh, oh. <laughs> Five less. Actually, there's just one less. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So that's like a whole different thing. Cause like I guess we're not very like in touch with like the non-binary like. I don't. Okay, right? so I feel we're that we're not woke yeah. enough. Is it? We're not woke enough. Mm. I feel maybe it uh based on our upbringing, we are not. I mean, not we, very we, we we know, but like you know, the the old like the, but we know because we consume a lot of pop culture news correct, and stuff correct, like that, correct. and we're always in tune with what's happening overseas. And you know, every time when you, okay, how did you hear about like you know non-binary day that stuff like that? It's just most of the time on TikTok on Reels, mm. and it's not uh, the serious videos. It's people making funny videos about these kind of topics, sure. and and that's where you yourself as an individual you draw a conclusion whether you want to learn more about it. Like for me, it's okay. I learn more about it okay mm. i understand because back then it was all about uh lgbtq correct mm. so it's whether you know more about it because let's let's face it when we were growing up our asian parents were always shunned against all these things correct, correct. but we as uh, a different generation we're like okay you know what uh we understand the it's about love generation mm-hmm. that kind of thing mm-hmm. you know people should uh be given the freedom to kind of express themselves or be whoever they want and we accept that mm. as people looking for different identities like yeah yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah conforms to their own view of themselves yeah because mm-hmm. we are probably brought up in a very empathetic way to understand people a little bit more like, okay la, you know if this makes you happy and, and we are more aware I won't say woke, but more aware about mental health issues mm, and stuff sure. like that. And you know, uh, if someone is really uh, like cooped up in a cage, mm. uh, being bullied and they want to voice out, all these type of things, we are more aware about all these issues. And uh, we are more aware about the backstory to why all these issues happen for mm. individuals, people who bully, people who are bullied. So I guess we are a more... Uh, I'll say empathetic generation. Empathetic, understanding. I, understanding. I guess, but there's a lot of like mixed opinions of course, about it. Of right, course, right, they will, yeah. it, when, when it, I mean, same thing. Like, any, look at Taylor Swift. Like, she's she's so popular, but you still have haters. Correct, correct. Yeah, it's like you, 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 she, she has, she sells out stadiums, but then every time you post up a photo of her on <laughs> Facebook, all the news portals, you'll have like, she's so underrated, she's so overrated, she's so overrated, the comfort of all the time people. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good thing that they are inclu- like they are including like, you know, these kind of communities. I think it forces people to kind of like, think about, you know, these kind of uh, issues also. Yeah. Yeah, which is good uh, for me lah. Mm. Yeah, but of course, there's a lot of like, you know, these kind of like, mixed reviews online. But I think, um, yeah. to go back into that, when you said that your Valorant, is it, introduced oh. a non binary character, do you think it's a part of education? Because I think I it think is. I think so. Yeah, I think. I, it is. I think it is a reflection of the the kind of debates uh, that are taking place in different parts of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's not taking a place immediately in Malaysia because of the cultural context that we live in, but in the US, in Europe, other places, you know, and and there are different kinds of these kinds of uh, you know cultural challenges in in different countries, right? Like in Japan. You hear of a phenomenon whereby they are like single guys that lock themselves up in a room and you know just you know have uh, friendships and relationships, everything online. online you know, yeah. so you know that's 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 a special term for it, right? So you know we are being exposed to more and more of these uh, different things, lah. And yeah. uh, you know, I'm I'm always trying to think of, hey, you know, maybe instead of the the normal way in which uh, politicians like to shout and scream at each other, uh, maybe it would be good uh, if let's say you know you can. Force them to go and play uh, Counter Strike or <laughs> play Street Fighter against one another, you know, then release it on 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 uh, ah, on, uh okay. using games, you know. And, and funny is okay, so I'm not sure if you are you know this, but I I was also uh, a little like uh, surprised when I was told this. So I went to a Lego event mm. and they were releasing this thing called Lego Friends. Mm. And if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, Lego Friends is a cartoon that is on uh, streaming platforms, and Lego has been a part of all of our lives, sure. young old. They are Lego collectors And then as kids You buy them Lego So that they can You know Create and stuff like that So there's these Lego friends And this Lego friends Was a refresh And in this refresh They created new characters mm. I'm not sure whether They have non-binary But I know that They had a, a, a Lego character Which was uh, A dog character Which was limbless Okay. Oh, okay. Then you know you know how uh pets when they have only two front legs Then they put the the wheels behind mm. them uh, uh, uh. They had uh They had 
they had a character which was also LGBTQ. Okay. Uh, and there were different different characters of different different uh backgrounds, you know. And I asked them like, oh wow, this is uh very interesting. Mm-hmm. And they said that oh yeah, uh, as a as a toy company that is so influential, they are very big on education, mm-hmm. and they believe that they they have a role to play in educating them from young, mm-hmm. so they can grow up with that understanding. And have less resentment about to different different individuals, so uh, they are all about, you know, uh, broadening broadening people's horizons. Maybe? Yeah, and 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 they are they are fa- they, and promoting family values, love, inclusivity, and whatever. And I'm mm. like, wow! Now that you put it that way, that's like you know, like <laughs> sm- very smart, lah. Yeah, well, yeah, Disney yeah. is doing that as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's mm. one of their ethos as well. You know, yeah. they've gotten some blue bank in Florida because of the governor there. But yeah, I mean, you know, that's th- each company has their own ethos in terms of how they want to, uh, you know, remain uh, culturally relevant or or want to be part of uh, part and parcel of, parcel of the cultural uh, conversation, so to speak. Yeah, but but. Oh my god! Mm. Since you speak about Disney, can I ask something? Mm. Okay, so you know how Little Mermaid they came up with the live action, right? Yeah. So there were a lot of like. You know, like mixed reviews also. Mm. Not about the movie, but about the the what the the actress. actress yeah, yeah, the actress. Mm. Yeah, cause like the original, like she was a uh, Ariel. Yes. Yeah, Ariel. she was white, right? Yeah. But then when the movie came out, like she was actually African played American. by a uh, yeah. Mm. So like, what do you think about like that whole situation? Do you think is like, like you know from I guess for a lot of people, their their opinion was they should have stuck to. Like the Ariel that they knew from like the cartoon mm-hmm. from the animated mm. movie. So did you yeah. watch the Disney one, the the original one? The original yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I grew up with it. Yeah, I grew up with that. That was like my uh re- my my the tape that I re- sorry must say uh, the tape that I replay a lot when ah. I, when my mom was too because my mom was a government school teacher. So when she doesn't come back, she's like she bought me Little Mermaid, Aladdin. Mm. I I tell you kids these those days right are. Uh, Kids today are so spot because they can watch the entire catalog of Disney yes. in one week. Okay, yes. my daughter has watched Little Mermaid lah. This not what princess, that princess, and whatever mm, not Pocahontas, monsters, Pocahontas, uh, uh, monsters Inc. Whatever mm. in like one week during her mm. holidays. We all had to wait like a few years, okay, for every release. <laughs> yeah, true. And then we have to go to the cinema, and we're like, wow. And there's no such thing as replaying it again. You have to buy the cinema ticket again, go in and watch again. And my mom is like, you think you think what money grow on trees? Yeah, that's where the film <laughs> came lah. Uh, yeah, I grew up watching The Little Mermaid and. It was awesome because uh, of the music, lah. I liked mm-hmm. I part liked, of the world, part yeah. of the world under the sea, you know all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. and then kiss you know, the girl. And yeah, yes. Mm. And then uh, after that, they they had those spin off where you have Disney on ice, you know. Mm. When it comes to Malaysia, suddenly mm. there's like, oh, all your favorite songs, mm. but now live in person, and mm. you be like, yeah, 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 yeah Beauty yeah, and yeah. the Beast and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah I grew up with those lah. Mm. Then I know that the latest remake came out. I did. Did I watch it? No, I didn't mm. watch it. I, I actually didn't watch it, but oh, I read it? about the reviews. And I think if you look at the way Hollywood has also changed, uh, it's become much more uh, diverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So let's say 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, you could never have imagined uh, an Asian movie, uh, you know, predominantly Asian cast winning the Best Picture Award. Yeah. Correct. Right. So this is, uh, you know, you know uh, which movie right, right. all at once. Yeah. <laughs> you know which movie, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but yeah, I know it's is 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 becoming much more di- diverse, and I think it's 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 a good ref- reflection on how the US and other parts of the world have also become more diverse. You have uh, leading men and and women who are you know of uh, you know different backgrounds. So, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of leading men now are from uh, South a- Asian heritage. You know, leading women who are uh, men and women who are Asian, for example. You know. Um, uh, I can't remember his name. Steve, uh, the the guy who was in uh, Walking Dead, Stephen uh, Yun. Uh, Stephen Yun. Yes, you know he's in a lot of uh, movies and uh, you know a fantastic actor. You know, so of course we are we are familiar with uh, Michelle Yeoh. But you know, y- if you look at some of the even uh, more recent uh, you know um, movies or series, have you heard of or uh, read uh, seen Three Body Problem? No. no. I have not Shugan, seen it. Uh, that one nodding ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix series, uh, really good sci-fi based on a uh, uh, you know story that was written by a Chinese uh, author. Uh, uh, got in a bit of a news because the first first scene in this particular series was about a physicist, Chinese physicist, who was killed during the uh, Cultural Revolution, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the the cast is very diverse. You know, you have uh, uh, somebody who is a Chinese, somebody who is. Uh, 
uh, you know, Hispanic, uh, you know, somebody who's African American, or you need to have some Americans there. But <laughs> yeah, very diverse crowd talking about how they want to come together to solve a particular scientific problem. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's more complicated than that. But you look at all the new Hollywood series, right? All yep. you know, they are, they are quite diverse. You will very see inclusive. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. But sometimes it kind of feels like they are forcing some. Okay, some a movies do it la. really well. Yes. Okay. Mm. I like for Disney, for example. Uh, sometimes some of it feels really, really forced. Force like, like, ah, okay, we have to add this scene in, you know, that kind of thing. Like one of the scenes from Buzz Lightyear. Ah, okay. uh, yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, okay. I mean, I get it, but uh, you know, it's like everybody was making a big hoo ha out of it. That when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's, 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 it's okay, what? It's nothing, uh, but you know, they have to edit mm-hmm. it. But most Disney, uh, I know Disney are doing it very, very, uh, like they are very, very aware now, lah. They are very very aware, and uh, I I it's it's a good thing. I mean, when Crazy Rich Asians first came out, I was like so happy because mm. like hey, number one okay we we know some people in there. You know Henry Golding was mm. a was a friend. Then they, then you go to the cinema, and all the people involved in that film, whether they are the lead or the supporting or the backup actors, because I'm in production, mm. and we see oh my god familiar faces. Mm but in a Hollywood movie. Mm, yes, exactly. And then for me, it was like, yeah, this is the time that we shout because you know why? There's a chance that uh, Malaysia could produce these things as well. Okay, I'm not trying to be very over my head, but I feel that M- Malaysian, some, of, some Malaysian directors could also direct Crazy Agents and also maybe do, uh, uh, well, the same or not, if not better. Mm. But we're just not given the opportunity to because yeah. So 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 that's why when I look at all these things, right? It's not just the diversity. It's not just the cultural uh, arguments or the cultural discussions. Mm-hmm. I also look at it from an economic standpoint. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, yes, love crazy rich agents, good showing for all the Asian act- actors and actresses in Hollywood. But the the country that took credit for it was Singapore. Singapore yeah. Whereas yeah. most of the filming was actually done in Malaysia. Yes. Right. The house, you know, that was uh, Kakosan. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So, uh, you know. Part of me thinks you know we need to do a better job in terms of marketing and making Malaysia an attractive place to do that that kind of work. Don't you think that Singapore is just a bloody good marketing agency <laughs> that well, markets themselves? It's it's uh, for survival, you know, for survival survival because they're a service based economy. So all mm. of these things are part and parcel of a larger plan. You know, even recently with Taylor Swift and you know paying her uh, more money so that she can uh, perform exclusively in Singapore that's also part of and parcel of their economic uh, strategy mm. yeah but uh, you know going back to to this uh, issue about Malaysians being should be given more opportunities i'm not sure whether you've uh, heard this before but the raya uh, the 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 disney movie with uh, you know uh, southeast oh. asian yes, yes 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 yeah, yes yeah, yeah. so the, the the main script writer the story writer i think there were two uh, one of them is a malaysian, malaysian is yeah. it adele is it I don't know who, but I I read the article lah. They said it was a Malaysian. Actually, mm. to be honest, a lot of people in Pixar Studios or Disney all are Malaysians, you know. <laughs> Many of the creative people doing uh, the designs and stuff like that, you know. So a lot, yeah. a lot. Because uh, so we have, I mean, in our line of work, we are very fortunate to travel and interview uh, people, whether it's celebrities or. So at one point, we interviewed the people behind. Uh, uh, yeah, what's the Disney movie again with all the emotions one? It's, inside Out. Ah, mm, yes, yes, Inside Out. It. Right, huge movie, yep. huge film. Uh, actually, some of the animators or of the characters are actually Malaysians, mm. and then we're like, "What?" <laughs> so I, you know, I, so this goes back to again, you know, uh, issues to do with public policy, right? Jobs. What kind of jobs do you want to create for Malaysians? Uh, of course, you know, we do have good jobs that are being created here. Uh, probably a little bit more higher paying in Singapore because of the exchange rate, mm-hmm. uh, and then there are a lot of, of opportunities outside as well. And when people ask me, "Hey," What do you recommend young people to do after they graduate and all that kind of stuff? You know, mm-hmm. I said, look, if you have opportunities outside the country that can give you the best career options or the best career best career pathways that you can get, go overseas. And then later on, maybe if let's say there are opportunities for you to come back, uh, invest in Malaysia, build the business, or maybe even come back, you know, maybe three months a year to do something here in Malaysia. You know, that's where I think we need to tap onto these uh, different talents. But wouldn't one, wouldn't, okay, wouldn't the government or like the policy makers want to create a policy that basically refrains these uh, star talents from leaving the country to go into that country in the notion of like, oh, maybe you go there, bring the experience back here. Mm-hmm. Whereas to be honest, in Malaysia, I, I'm, talk, I'm only just talking about the creative industry. There are mm. a lot of geniuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, okay, I, I speak of this because, uh, you know, uh, Marvel, Mm-hmm. Uh, Avengers, all all of the VFX or the 3D artists are all Malaysians. Uh, 
also Shangxi. Mm. A lot of them are Malaysians, <laughs> but uh, Changxi is very interesting because you know they were all working in Malaysia. They didn't have cause lockdown, ma. Mm. Mm. So they were all working from home. So you, they, they, the thing is, they they don't need to go overseas to bring the sure. the the experience back. They already have the vision. I live uh I live in the same neighborhood as this one uh artist. Okay, I I may be introducing him really wrongly, but okay, his name is Zin. He's really huge in Japan and Taiwan. He's the type that when he, his drawings are on Uniqlo t-shirt, there's a long line outside and it's sold out and people will resell it. Mm. Mm. He's Malaysian. Mm. And I'm like, whoa, okay. And he lives here in Malaysia. He lives here mm. in Malaysia. Mm. Yeah, so the thing is like, um, a lot of people tend, see, we talk, then, then will, it then lead to this whole brain drain issue. A lot of people who are creative and really geniuses will go outside to look for uh, a better opportunity. I, I asked all these people who are in the line of doing the, because the, they, 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 they only told me that they work on all these Marvel films after the films are because of NDA. Mm. Then I said, hey, how come you don't want to work in Malaysia? Hey, come on, you do for uh, Marvel movie, do for Malaysia. Then they're like, oh yeah, but we, 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 we have no one to give us that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that ecosystem is not easy to build. Yeah, it's right. not. Right? And it's about trying to get people together. And you know, from my experience in government, the government is the worst entity or organization to get those people together. It's got to be private sector driven. Oh. Uh, and, you know, we need to get other people in the corporate sector to support these kinds of initiatives and maybe a little bit of investment up front. But ultimately, we do want these initiatives to be, uh, you know, uh, sustainable from a financial perspective. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I, I want to ask this question, maybe because, you know, I am in this industry, the creative industry. Mm. Do you think the creative industry is an industry that is filled with uh, massive opportunities monetary wise? The potential is there. Uh, of course, if let's say you just focus on Malaysia, the, the market is a bit small. Uh, but since Malaysia is our country, our home country, that's where our base is. And I think once we have enough of a base, then that's where we want opportunities to be able to go out into the region, even uh, internet, uh, regionally in Southeast Asia or in Asia Pacific, and then maybe even internationally. So if you are uh, you know, somebody who's doing Twitch, mm. you... I'm, you know, I'm curious. You know, Shufi, your audience would be probably around Asia. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah More right? here in Singapore mostly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in Southeast Asia, lah. Yeah. So then yeah. she has a regional audience, and that's the kind of space that she's playing in now. Uh, and then you know, after a while, you know, you would also want to pivot uh, in terms of the kind of uh, you know um, uh, offerings that you are you are you are you are you know partnering with different people on and. That's how you want to grow that ecosystem, right? So, mm. oh, this is a problem for some creators actually, especially with TikTok creators. Mm-hmm. It's like there are people that I know that spoke of this last. So, for example, right, like let's say they have a lot of followers, right? But let's say their followers are mainly like overseas, like maybe in the US or something. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit hard for them to get campaigns here because mm. they, they want the Malaysians. audience from yeah in the local side of things, but because their audience are all like in the US and like all these, right? So brands feel like, oh, they are not really like, like, you know, effective like, oh, when okay, it comes okay, to I promoting. Get, I get, I get but, but wouldn't it be better for them? Because if let's say their followers are overseas, then they can actually try to pitch ideas overseas overseas, and be able to mm. get paid in uh, US dollars or Euro and things like that. Yeah, I think to answer that question, okay, so... Uh, then I'll go really way back to the basics. Uh, when someone basically discovers themselves as becoming a creator, uh, they will obviously uh, start building or a massive a following. Mm. Okay, some can come, some can grow gradually, some can grow overnight. The ones that grow gradually, I feel always benefits a lot better yeah. because they 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 grow with the process of growing. Yeah, organic, they learn, uh, yeah. organic. They mm. learn. They they learn as they grow, yeah. which is which is a good thing. You know, it's just like us going center one, center two, center three. When you're ready to to take on more responsibilities, then it's great. Cannot just jump to jump to a, do a PhD straight away. Like. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, cannot. For those who grow massively overnight, it's a good thing. Mm. The good thing is, okay, you're popular. You are now the eye of the world. Well, you have the attention of oh, not only your own country or maybe the whole world. Mm. But the problem is, most of them do not. Um, progress fast enough business wise mm. they don't know how to charge they don't know how mm. to uh, manage themselves they mm. don't know build a team build, yeah they don't know about building a team mm. because you see they grew because they did it themselves mm. so the mentality will always stick to that it's like oh you know what I'll just continue doing this myself mm. because it's what I did when, when I started a YouTube channel it was just me one, one side holding a camera the other side holding a microphone and yeah. going out and filming one guy 
And then I'm like, that mentality kept sticking. I was like, nama lah, I can do it myself. Nama lah, I can do it myself. Nama lah, I can do it myself. Until you realize uh, after you hire the first person who takes away my job of editing. Mm. And then you realize like, oh wow, this younger guy can edit better than me. Yeah. And then now it's the question of, do I uh, have a big ego and no, I'm not gonna let him edit because I don't want him to be better than me. I want it to be my style or do you let go? So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very tough thing for creators to let go of their creativity because mm. again, creativity is very personal. Ma. Sure. Mm. Um, so, uh, so I'm dwelling a bit off topic already, but to answer your question is you are a Malaysian and you have your following being amassed overseas mm. and you said that it's a good thing because you can pitch mm. to the Europe people and earn in USD and yeah. uh, that is that that is great if you have a great team overseas. in the US that is representing you mm. yeah if you are relying it on yourself it's very tough because cross culture mm. we sometimes don't know how Americans work and we don't know, it, it, I've kind of before la, like, you talk to American people, whatever you think that they are saying, and suddenly you're like, huh, job confirmed already, but I'll just say, I get back to you. You know, this, they know with their mm-hmm. big work, you know, sometimes we don't understand how they work. So, so it's better to have a representative locally. In that country, yeah. To represent you. If you're a Malaysian, if you're a big Malaysian, have a local representative and represent you uh, for your jobs. Sometimes people in, 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 in the Malaysia who are huge worldwide does not, cannot even sustain themselves because they're not getting jobs. And they are hoping for local agencies in Malaysia to get them jobs with local brands. When you start showing your statistics to the brands, they'll be like, this doesn't make sense. I know you have 10 million followers, but like 99% of them are in the States. Mm. If I'm going to spend money and you only give me 1% of Malaysian audience, mm. what's the point? So so, so on, on that point, I think this is where the discussion on the Malaysian diaspora becomes important mm-hmm. because we have Malaysians all over the place yep. and I think more we have a lot of good Malaysians, uh, you know, decent people that are willing to work together with Malaysians who want to go overseas and mm-hmm. want to make it uh, out there. So, you know, I'll give a personal example. You you, you know him as well, G- uh, Dr. Jason Leong. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> hi, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, he, he, he has you know, gone overseas, ventured into, uh, you know, Australia, US and all that, you know, and he has Malaysians in different places to help him with shows, yep. to help him open up doors to certain people. So he's good friend. He's good friends with uh, Ronnie Cheng, for example. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So w- in if let's say we ca- we can build that kind of uh, ecosystem uh, with Malaysians uh, abroad, you know, even Southeast Asians who can then rep Malaysians or Southeast Asian on certain things, you know, including branding and all that kind of stuff. Then that's how you get to grow the ecosystem. And I think the timing is pretty good now because of what we talked about earlier, mm-hmm. getting more diverse, getting more, you know, uh, inclusive and things like that. So, you know, it, it's it's a good time to venture out and to, uh, you know, test the waters, so to speak. It is, it is. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. Um, like we always, as filmmakers or people who do films, we always bring Korea, uh, Korea into a discussion. The government was behind them when it comes to like, hey, this is going to be the road to the Oscars. I'm pretty sure you watched the movie Parasite, right? And it has to be a very like... Concerted, strategic, long-term. Y- long-term lah. Mm. Nobody's going to win an Oscar overnight. Michelle Yeoh, took how long did it take her to really get to where she is today? At one point of time, I think she was quiet for a while, but then she came back and mm. then, you know... Uh, probably got into films that really did really, really well for her. And then one after another, I mean, mm. we all know her for Crazy Agents and everything everywhere all at once. But apart from that, do you know that she got some mountains of films? That no, she's I started watching in? her when she was, uh, you know, she, she was starring in yeah, Jackie Chan movies, Police, Police Story, Story yeah, 3, yeah. and uh, even before that, Owl vs. Dumbo and all that. You know, this is a long time ago with Samo Hong, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you have to work hard, you know, you have to, you have to, you know, really hustle and uh, get to the, you know, grind out your your career. Yeah, uh, and we we need to do that, you know, as an industry as well. And and I feel that uh, maybe people like Michelle Yeoh and also like Henry Golding can come back to Malaysia and really really give like advice or pointers to the local policy makers to tell them that okay, this is what uh, people overseas are doing. Mm. Why don't we practice it here? You know, mm. I mean, uh, it's easier said than done, lah. Right. Yeah, I, you you need I think people who uh, you know really are smart enough to be able to think strategically and long term, and maybe with a little bit of experience as well. And mm-hmm. I'll give you a specific example uh, mm-hmm. uh, of somebody who has uh, gone through that whole media uh, monetization uh, production kind of uh, you know uh, uh, pathway. So Kari Jamaluddin, my yeah. good friend, <laughs> uh, the former minister of health. Yeah. Uh, you know he's uh, he was partyless after he was sacked from Amno, and he was. 
uh, you know, trying to find a vehicle, you know, so that he could uh, still have his voice out in the public. And he started a podcast called Kluas Kejap with yeah. Sharia Hamdan. Mm. Uh, and Sharia has said this in, in other shows. Actually, Sharia approached me first. Oh, really? Uh, to uh, to be his co-host. Oh. <coughs> but when Kyrie asked him, uh, and Sharia hey, said, said to me, hey, Kyrie is asking me, I said, no brainer, you go with Kyrie. <laughs> <laughs> and now, you know, their show is getting three, four hundred thousand views. Number one show yes, in the country. exactly. Doing sponsorships. You know, you, you see this uh, Vida drink, uh, Kyrie is uh, there, Salam Kosong Kosong. It's so know? weird to see him in all these commercials because, you know, we've always been so used to seeing him as a politician, always prim and proper talking about policies, but, right? But younger people now would know him as a podcaster. Yes, yeah, 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 true, yes, yes, true. yes. Right? Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. and he's relevant lah. He's hip. Yes. He's cool. Yes, and that is actually showing a way in which uh, this kind of media ecosystem, content creation, can be something that's profitable and also educational and influential as well. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And for if and and it, and it's not uh, market specific. It is basically cross. Okay, I won't say that cross job is cross uh, cultural because obviously it's more for the Malay market. But it also means that uh, you know if Kyrie can do it. So can anybody else from maybe the Chinese market or the English market, but I think in Malaysia is a bit difficult because I think the English market tends to be drowned a little bit lah because we tend to be the smaller percentage. You're right, but you know, let's say for my own podcast, uh, are we okay? When I started doing the podcast, I already planned it such that it's not just the podcast that I'll focus on in terms of Malaysian issues, but I'm touching issues in Singapore. Mm. I'm trying to touch issues with regards to Sabah and Sarawak, and then maybe later on can go regional and. You know, Kairi Truth Kloas Kijab is doing something similar. They covered the uh, Indonesian elections, and and I'm sure they'll be you know covering some of the other regional big big ticket uh, items as well. Uh, and I I think f- for for my podcast, we are also interviewing people in the corporate sector. Yeah. So trying to branch out into other activities that mm. can be monetizable later on. So that's part and parcel of having some experience, you know, in in government in consulting to be able to build that ecosystem in a sustainable way, mm. right? For younger people, maybe you just start off teaching, uh, streaming, a bit fun, and then later, hey, actually we can make this into a business and then you start to find collaborators, correct, you know, correct. and and you grow the ecosystem. Yeah. So we need to have these kinds of lessons that we can, you know, uh, give or share, you know, uh, with other people to grow that ecosystem even more right so do you enjoy your position on where you are right now or do you miss shouting in parliament uh, i do not miss shouting in parliament <laughs> because i wasn't i didn't really shout that much in parliament <laughs> la, yeah but now i give myself a new title okay uh i'm the chief capo officer <laughs> <laughs> i go into different places to capo you know whether i whether i'm invited or not and then i try to add value in different uh, places whether it's the private sector or government and then uh you know accumulate more experiences and you know uh, some of it will find its way into podcast some of it will find its way into my academic job you know some of it will find its way into writings or, or other stuff but yeah I, I think it's an enjoyable process and you know I get to speak to you guys as well mm. yeah. <laughs> hey, but speaking of Kepo right do you guys hear what happened recently uh, uh, for April Fool's which one? Namwi. Ah. Uh, the yeah, one once I saw, I'm lo- I know ah, this is a publicity son already. I, <laughs> I knew too. We all know ma. Uh, you see the fine print, uh, you know, visiting hours is only 1st of April. Uh, between no, but, but do you know about the reporter? Yeah, they, they uh, okay, so I saw this, but the thing is my banana, my banana nurse did not understand what was going on. So I would <laughs> like to see her screaming and I tried to click on C translate and try to assess the situation. I think reporters went to the funeral parlor, right? Yeah, okay. So basically what happened to give context lah. So basically Niwi he announced on his Instagram or his social media platforms on April Fool's Day to say that he was deceased. Mm, yes. Right? And he had like a whole funeral and all that. So basically there was this reporter from I think Sinchu, I don't know. Okay, don't quote me, but I think it's from Sinchu, but she went there to verify whether it was true. Oh. And then there was this guy standing at the entrance saying that she cannot uh, go in and ask questions and interview because it's like a ceremony, right? So yeah. it's like a very personal, very som- somber, solemn. Yes, like it's it's supposed you're supposed to pay respects, not come here to like interview and stuff. And then sh- her argument was that there were a lot of fa- like Nimi has a lot of fans. Yeah. He's like a content creator. He's like a like a like a person of importance lah to mm. a lot of people. And he's actually quite iconic lah. That fellow. Yeah. He's done so many things. Yeah. So the news reporter was like saying like it's like their right to like know whether this news is real or not. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are worried. Mm. And like she has the right to go in and ask questions. Mm. Yeah. But that person like the, the guy. The bouncer lah. Yeah. The, the, yeah, bouncer. the bouncer yeah. said that the no, gate you cannot ke- the do gates that. of the gatekeeper. Yeah, you cannot do that. Like, yeah, it's a personal thing. Like, you cannot just come in and you know. But like, what do you guys think about that? 
<sighs> when I saw it, I knew it was really okay. So at first, I saw the post. Mm. Then I'm like, okay, this is April Fool's joke. Mm. Then he posts second time. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah lah. I, I, I thought I, the second picture was uh like uh an altar, but beautifully done with all his pictures and everything. Then in my mind, I was like. Wow, not bad, ah! Uh. AI can do such mm. things. Good, good, good production value. Yeah, good, good mm. production value. Mm. Then after that, the third one was uh, I can't remember what. Okay, I think there were two pictures in it. Then in my mind, I was like, uh, "Yeah, lah, it's April Fools' lah. I'm just gonna wait until until it kind of comes out uh, from him, lah, right?" Then after that, later on that night, Miss Puyi posted a picture <laughs> of her video calling the altar and bowing three times, <laughs> and I'm like, "Hmm." Yeah, it's like okay, uh, maybe I would like to give him that two percent uh, of doubt, uh, 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 credibility, uh, credibility that maybe you know something did happen, mm. but eighty, eighty, no, what ninety eight percent? I think is this a campaign? Mm, <laughs> mm, <laughs> you know? No, I think like in regards to the joke itself, like you know, it's arguable that it's very distasteful, lah. But I think it kind of like I think my my op- like. My curiosity kind of goes back to whether you think the reporter was, like, you know, right or not. Because I think she's getting a lot of hate for what she did. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm not going to speak on behalf of the reporter. But for me, I okay, I have followed, I've been a quite an avid follower of Namewee despite the language mm. barrier. Mm. And I know his kind of humor <laughs> and what he does. You, you know what I mean? So when he posted something like that, I kind of already expected it to be a uh, April Fool's joke. Yes, to some people, it says that it will be distasteful to kind of uh, put yourself out there saying that you're deceased because mm. yes, you have fans. Joke about dying, lah. Yeah, talk mm. about dying. Uh, but it, I, th- I think like it's always been a very Asian thing to not joke about deceased, but about dying mm-hmm. or anything in all particular. But if he wants to do it. I don't think Namwee is a stupid person, lah. He's mm. actually a genius. Yeah, yeah marketing wise. He marketing wise, yeah. he's a genius. And I and I I work. I was very fortunate to have worked with him before and star in one of his films. And I he he's the way he thinks is just he's pure genius, lah. Just just put it that, lah. So he knows what I know. He knows what he's getting into. Mm. Mm. For me, is I'm gonna look at it always, always as an entertainment standpoint. Mm. Okay. All right, whatever comes out of it. Is his responsibility. He's going to deal with it. I am in no way going to be part of the discussion to, to condemn him or whatever not because he knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Right. On, on the reporter part, um, I think the reporter would have been assigned to this story by the editor. Right. Yeah. So it is her responsibility to go and cover that story. Correct. Right? And I don't think she should be getting hit for it. Yes. Yeah. She, she goes there to see. You know? She probably thinks that it's a fake. But since you already put it out there, there's this thing going on. Let me go and cover. Let me go and uh, 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 you know, uh, ask the right questions. Of course, she's playing into that narrative as well. So yep. that's one thing. The second thing uh, about, uh, you know, more specifically about Nam Wee is that He's always somebody who is trying to break taboos. Yeah. Mm. Right? Uh, you know, I remember his, his, uh, one of his uh, classic, uh, you know, videos. Y- you understand Chinese? Yeah, uh, yeah, Ma yeah I do. Hua Yi. Mm-hmm. So that one was actually, you know, this, uh, he, he was trying to make fun of people who go to KL and then go back to uh, Moa and start speaking in Cantonese. Mm. Right? So this is actually a very nuanced uh, criticism of uh, certain uh, cultural practices, you know, that you forget your roots, so to speak. Yep. Right? Uh, and he's always been breaking taboo since then, right? Yes. So this is part and parcel of breaking that taboo, which I think is good because it sparks conversation. The fact that we are talking about it now, I think it's also uh, interesting, and, and I, I think it's it's good for us to be able to speak about these things in open and hopefully, uh, you know, uh, broaden the discussion so that we can bring in things like, oh, reporter got right to ask question or not? Mm-hmm. Uh, is this uh, something that is uh, culturally insensitive? And then. Let's have a mature discussion about this. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you know, I feel that uh, again, like we get, this goes back to the question we asked. You know, how do we verify news which is real or not? But okay, this is a bit hard because he came from the source himself, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I'm pretty sure that you know, if anything at all, if he was not unwell or whatever, not okay, lah. Touch wood, lah. Okay, if he got into an accident and may, okay. so happen something happened to him, lah. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure it, within a span of two three hours, they'll already be reported just to kind of verify. Sure. It. The fact that no one else could verify whatever he was mm-hmm. saying, or nobody could kind of echo what actually happened or what led to his so-called uh, April Fool's joke or his demise, right? It is really kind of gives everybody that sense of like, eh, this why I need my mind you. Mm-hmm. And then you can see the comments on his uh, on his pages, right? Are all not like, oh, rest in peace, rest in peace. Rest mm-hmm. All of them are. 
all like joking like hey mm. how come got no girls one <laughs> how come got no girls in your funeral one or how come got no models one? you know so I guess his fans would understand mm. uh, for me okay personally if you ask me would I joke about my own like would I do that I wouldn't because mm. you know I'm not as daring as Nemui to face the repercussions because mm. there's gonna be people out there who are both going to laugh at it but also going to condemn it as well. Yeah. Mm. But him, him from the other hand, probably like, oh, this is not the worst thing that's ever happened to me. So screw yeah. it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Maybe just to finish the dis- discussion on Namwi and I think probably, you know, uh, wrap this up. Namwi, if, when he did that, I'm sure he would have thought of what happens if I really passed away. Yeah. Uh, and then one of the things that he would have thought of is what is the legacy I leave behind mm-hmm. as an entertainer. And I think he leaves behind a rich legacy. Oh if, yeah, you know, mm. we can look at all the things that he's done. You know, you probably can write a PhD thesis on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, just to compare him with somebody else, uh, which uh, I think is also very interesting, a uh, gentleman by the name of uh, Chadwick Boseman. Yes, oh, okay. uh, yeah, Wakanda. Yes, right? yes, yes. So he was suffering from cancer. Uh, nobody knew except for his family. Yeah, right. And then he just passed away and then was announced like that, right? Yep. People were shocked because they didn't know and all that. But then when people look back at his legacy, it was a fantastic legacy. Mm. He lived a short life. Uh, you know, I, I think he would have uh, definitely won an Oscar or two if he had continued uh, to be in the acting world. But, you know, you look at all the movies that he made, uh, very diverse, uh, very different. You know, he played uh, different characters, different real-life characters and fictional characters, mm-hmm. uh, you know, including the first uh, African-American uh, uh, Supreme Court judge in the U.S., uh, and also, you know, Wakanda, uh, and that that is, uh, I think, something that maybe uh, you are you are not old enough to 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 think about that. But for me, you know, when I look at some of the politicians in Malaysia, uh, you know, including the 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 oldest prime minister in the world, <laughs> you know, what kind of legacy do they want to leave uh, behind? Uh, and I think, uh, you know, there will be a lot of uh, discussions if well, uh, when uh, you know Tun Mahathir, you know, passes. Uh, and also uh, other older politicians. And I think this is something that, you know, I also want to remind myself and my friends in politics like that what we do in life echoes in eternity. Oh, that was yes. from a movie. Do you remember which one? Gladiator? <laughs> 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 yeah. So, you know, I, I think, you know, that's that's uh, maybe a good way to, to wrap up uh, today's uh, conversation uh, yes, in terms yes, of yes, all yes. the things that we talk about, you know, what kind of... Um, impact do we want to have uh, in different uh, you know areas of influence that all of us have well, what is the one thing that you want to impact most with regards to your your influence and your career uh, I want young people to see that public policy is something that they can influence in a positive way mm-hmm. uh, and it is not something that is foreign to them right mm-hmm. so that's part and parcel of my education process whether it's or process of educating others whether it's in my podcast or now as a program director for the first PPE course in Malaysia, a uh, first PPE program in Malaysia, PPE stands for not personal protective equipment, <laughs> uh, but uh, philosophy, politics, economics. It's a very popular program in the UK. Uh, it's one of the most popular programs in the University of Oxford. Mm-hmm. Kairi Jamaluddin and Tony Pua, uh, two good friends of mine who are part of the industry advisory panel for this PPE program, they both took PPE uh, in Oxford. So oh. good, good uh, examples, I think, for people to follow, you know, in terms of wanting to leave a positive impact on uh, on on uh, the so, so the communities that we live in right okay one last question before we wrap this up so i see you know from on the front line right we always see politicians uh, shouting each other disagreeing with each other and then condemn each other mm. but in the back end are you all actually all friends uh? Uh, <laughs> we definitely can go to the parliament hall uh, parliament canteen and have drinks here and there la. but um uh, here here here's something that i think uh, you know may may be foreign to your audience la. Mm-hmm. Uh, we probably can go back and uh, you know go to the parliament hall and talk to uh, you know people from the other side. You know it's all friendly banter. Of course, we know where the lines are drawn, mm-hmm. but I think the 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 place where it hurts the most, it hits uh, the hardest, is when you fall out with your own colleagues within your own party or coalition. Uh. Uh, that would be the most painful, right? Because you have to work with you know these people, uh, and then when y- they see you, you see them, you still say hi bye, but it's very perfunctory. But at the, at, at the back of your mind, you know, oh, this guy has stabbed my back. Or uh, at the back of your mind, oh, this guy has betrayed me, you know. Then mm. uh, those are the things that I think, uh, you know, are, are tougher to, to, to stomach. Uh, probably one of the reasons why I decided to step back from frontline politics as well. But uh. it's okay. It's all good. Uh, there are other ways in which uh, I can contribute, you know, uh, in terms of making Malaysia a better place. Oh, uh. that's so deep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you guys are like fighting for the same thing, but like, at the same time, you're like fighting against each other. Uh, uh this here, she has a little secret for you, lah. 
all politicians are selfish and self-motivated. Mm. Right, so whatever you see, you know, in in the social media stuff and all that, uh, take it with a large pinch of salt, to really know who these people are and how genuine and how sincere they are. Mm-hmm. The people that you have to ask, number one is their family. Mm. Number two, their special officers, the people who work around them uh, and who work for them. Uh, uh, you know, these are the people who know them, uh, you know, on a real time basis to see whether they are genuine or not, lah. And uh, I know, thankfully, uh, you know, a number of them from my party that are very genuine. Uh, people like, uh, you know, Liu Chin Tong, you know, Tony Pra previously, uh, Anthony Lok, you know, mm. Transport Minister, you know, um, uh, Tony Ching and a few others, you know. So, uh, these are people with good hearts. Uh, they try their best, you know, Hannah Yeo, uh, the Youth and Sports Minister. So, uh, at least I'm comforted by the fact that there are still some good people there uh, and we need to make sure that there's a good lineup of younger people who can... Uh, Uh, journey with them and be part and parcel of the process of uh, positive change. Are they are they more younger uh, individuals wanting to join politics and tr- wanting to make change? Uh, yes, uh, I know more of them in my party, mm-hmm. uh, and I'll be releasing a podcast uh, sometime soon, uh, interviewing the youngest female uh, local councillor in Petaling Jaya, mm. right? To see, you know, understand her story and then to showcase her story to others. To sh- to see that there is uh, there are opportunities for you to make a positive difference uh, in politics in policy at a very local level. Do you, do you believe that the younger generation will make a better impact as compared to the older generation uh, in politics? Hundred percent, hundred percent. And I'll leave okay. you with this thought, lah. Because uh, you know the younger generation, which includes I think you guys, uh, maybe more so should be. That cannot be in politics, eh? No, 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 not not not, <laughs> not in politics. Yeah, but you you have grown up in a context in Malaysia whereby there's no dominant party. Mm. You can see, oh, this one in power one day, the next day they're out of power already, and then you are in a situation where people are much more, uh, you know, f- free to speak up and speak Correct. out. Yes, right. So and 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 you see good role models out there. You also see bad ones, and then you see different pathways in which you can affect society, uh, including you know your media engagements and whatnot. And that's where I think. The younger people, uh, especially those with uh, good ideals, we need to channel them in the right places so that they can, uh, you know, flourish and develop their talents and nurture their talents so that they can become uh, leaders of the new generation. Mm. Oh, I have to ask this question: Do you think uh, people of okay, uh, mm, maybe maybe for my industry, that do you think influencers or KLs or people with a following should voice out their support on who they are supporting with regards to like election time and whatever? I think they should focus. KOL should focus on policies. Mm. Mm. You can interview personalities, uh, but always ask them about what are the policies that they are promoting, and how it impacts people, right? If let's say they come and tell you, oh, uh, vote for me because I'm very lang tai, or vote for me because I have a lot of social media following, or vote for me because I'm going to give you a lot of free stuff, you know, then I think you need to take that with a pinch of salt. Ultimately, uh, it is uh, sustainable policies that can really make a difference uh, in the lives of uh, the average person and. I don't like to use this example, but I think it's a good example for us to relate to. Uh, look at what Singapore has done, mm-hmm. right? It is not personalities, even though they had a strong leader in Lee Kuan Yew, but it's sustainable policies that they've put in along the way, nurture good talent, you know, in the civil service, in the corporate sector, in their, uh, in in politics as well, and then you have all these policies that have really made uh, the country uh, grown rich and also, uh, you know, nice place to live, getting more expensive, and I think. Uh, you know, we can learn a uh, few things from them, and they probably can learn a few things from us as well. Yeah, because I think I only ask that because uh, we were always brought up, or me, I always grew up to always be very quiet about who you support. You know how they say that your vote is always uh, silent and stuff like that. Mm. So that's why tend uh, a lot of people tend to not want to say anything, but those who do, it's quite obvious they're paid to do so. And yeah. I am totally very much against that lah, being mm. paid to support a party. Yeah, which is why I think the role for Influencers, uh, people, and you know the KOLs would be to ask these kinds of, uh, I think, uh, more reflective questions uh, uh, to the politicians that they know, to the politicians that they want to invite onto their platforms, right? Yeah. E- even ask them things about what do you think uh, is the future trajectory of things like esports, for example, right? Uh, you know, that's part and parcel of the larger discussion that we need to think about and have. 
So if uh, you mentioned that uh, pol- politicians are mostly very selfish, we as citizens or normal people should also be selfish in our self-interest. Say, oh, what, what can you guys do for me? Is it? That's the question. Uh, what can you do, not for me personally, but for the community I yeah, represent, yeah. for maybe my aspirations okay. to make, let's say, Subang Jaya or USJ or Selangor into a more uh, progressive, livable, uh, you know, um, more, uh, you know, open place with uh, good paying jobs and good infrastructure something like that okay yeah. okay all right cool cool hey thanks so much uh, for taking time thanks i know you're a very me. busy person <laughs> no, i'm a b- I'm, I'm a i'm a very busy body person <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chief yeah. officer. i hope this won't be the last time and hopefully you know in future discussions we can have you on show to talk about certain things you know or what you're working towards uh, and i can invite you guys to come on uh, my podcast hey as of well. course can no problem uh, I, I hope i bring value to that because you know uh <coughs> i still work in a very young industry <laughs> i try very hard to remain young lah, okay uh, try yeah uh, try <laughs> by hanging out with young people like. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Thank you so much for tuning in today's show. Uh, you know, remember you can stream us on Spotify. We are on uh, Google Podcast. We are also on uh, Apple Podcast, and of course, check out uh, On Ken Ming's uh, podcast is uh, on. Okay, is are we okay? Just search for are we okay. He'll pop up one. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, guys, and we'll speak to you guys next time. Bye bye.